I'll share with you crucial information that will help you plan your trip to Venice, Italy. In this video, we will cover when is the best time to visit Venice, how many days to plan in Venice, where to stay, how to get around the city on water, how safe is Venice and much more. Hi guys, I'm Rock and I spent last 9 years traveling around Europe as a tour guide and I want to share with you my Venice travel tips. One of the first decisions you'll have to make is when to travel. Venice can be visited all year round, although some seasons might suit you better than others. Winter is cold and rainy, with daily average temperatures around 40 Fahrenheit or 5 centigrade. This is the time of low season, when the city is quiet, with the exception of annual festival Carnival of Venice in February. November and February are also months when high tide, known as Aqua Alta, floods Venice. The city has been sinking over years due to steadily rising sea levels. To prevent floods, huge lock system has just been finished, but it has not yet proven to be 100% safe. But high waters are not preventing sightseeing as Venetians are used to deal with it. If you really must avoid crowds or you want to see the carnival, this is the time to go, otherwise I wouldn't advise you to visit Venice in this time of year. Shoulder season in Venice falls in the spring and autumn, both beautiful times to visit. In March, average daily temperatures gradually rise to 50 Fahrenheit or 12 centigrade and reach 70 Fahrenheit or 20 centigrade in May. At the beginning of the spring season, top attractions may still close early. But crowds are low and I would very much recommend a visit in this time of year. Summer is the peak of tourist season. Average daily temperatures are around 82 Fahrenheit or 27 centigrades. Hotel rates are high and there is plenty of crowds. Unless summer is the only time you can visit Venice, I would advise you to avoid it. But if you're watching this just after the pandemic, then summer might be a great opportunity as it will take a year or two before the crowds return. In the autumn, temperatures, number of visitors and prices gradually drop, but the weather remains to be warm and dry. September and October are beautiful, warm and pleasant months and I would very much recommend a visit in this time of year. Once you know when to go, you have to decide for how long to go. How many days in Venice is enough? Well, despite its compact size, moving from one part of Venice to another will take a little bit more time than in other cities, as there are no cars, no underground and even no bicycles. That is why you should spend at least two full days in Venice to cover the most important main attractions. On the third day, you can visit few of the surrounding islands like Burano, Morano and Lido or explore some other amazing but less famous hidden gems. For majority of people, two to three days in Venice will be enough. If you want to learn about main attractions, check out my things to do in Venice video in the top right corner. Once you set your arrival and departure dates, you must decide where to look for accommodation. Modern part of Venice is on the mainland and it is an option if you're looking for spacious modern hotels or if you need the most economic accommodation. If that is not the case, then I would advise you to look for accommodation in the historic city center on water as it's very time consuming to get from the mainland to the famous hotspots. The historic city center is divided into six areas and you can find excellent hotels and many Airbnb options in all six neighborhoods. By the way, six fingers on the bow of gondolas are representing neighborhoods. The biggest attractions are concentrated in San Marco, Dorsorduro and Canareggio neighborhoods and we'll look a bit closer at these three areas. San Marco is the oldest neighborhood where you'll find famous St. Mark's Square surrounded by Basilica, Bell Tower, Dodge Palace and other amazing architecture. This is the busiest and the most touristy area. If you have very little time in Venice and you want to be in the center of action and budget is not a problem, this might be the best option for you. Here is also water bus hub from where you can reach other parts of Venice quite easily. 
Staying in this neighborhood could minimize your walking around Venice. Dorsoduro neighborhood is located opposite of San Marco on the other side of the Grand Canal. The neighborhoods are linked by Academia Bridge. This is another expensive and popular area, although it is less crowded. Dorsoduro is popular for its cluster of lively bars, famous gallery Academia, Peggy Guggenheim collection and beautiful round basilica di Santa Maria della Salute. Canareggio neighborhood is north of San Marco area. It's quite big and it offers wide range of accommodation options, including more affordable ones. Some parts of this neighborhood are quiet and further away from the hotspots, while other parts closer to San Marco are busier. Here you can find good balance between price and value. Most notable attractions are Jewish ghetto, many beautiful churches, stunning Cada Oro Palace and lovely squares and streets. It's good to know that there are only four bridges across the Grand Canal. That is why I would advise you to look for accommodation close to Rialto or Academia Bridge. These two bridges are linking the neighborhoods we just mentioned. Most visitors fly into International Venice Marco Polo Airport. From there you have several options how to get to historic city center. First you have a bus number 5 known as Aerobus. Airport is its first stop and the edge of the historic city center is the last stop. If you take a taxi it will drop you off at the same spot as the bus since the roads end right there. Ali Laguna water bus or private boats can get you right into the heart of the old town as airport has its own dock. Orange water bus line takes you right to Rialto or St. Mark's Square. Once you reach Venice Old Town, there are no buses, no cars or bicycles and the question is, what are the best ways to get around? You will have to walk as pedestrian streets are linked with over 400 bridges. But be aware that bridges have steps and no ramps, so it can be challenging for baby strollers or even more so for wheelchairs or big suitcases. It's good to know that Grand Canal splits Venice into two halves and it has only four bridges, so you have to plan ahead your crossings. This is the most modern bridge as it was built in 2008. It is called Constitution Bridge and it's made of steel and glass. Second one is the Stone Arch Bridge from 1934. This was the first bridge across the Grand Canal. It is the oldest, the most beautiful and the most famous Rialto Bridge. And the fourth bridge is called Ponte dell'Accademia, made of wood and metal and it's the most popular among photographers as it offers beautiful views. If you need to cover longer distances or neighboring islands, you can hop on public water buses called Vaporetto. To use Vaporetto, you first need a ticket that can be bought at ticket offices on major stations. There are single rides, 24-hour, 48-hour, 72-hour and 7-day tickets available. It is much more convenient to buy tickets via AVM Venezia mobile app. I use the app a lot as it's easier to find your phone than a paper ticket to show it to ticket inspector as controls happen quite often. As all tickets must be scanned in the QR reader before entering the bus station, Really big phones like iPhone Max or Samsung Galaxy Plus models won't fit in the QR code scanners. If you have a big phone, you might be better off with a regular paper ticket. Vaporetto lines are numbered from 1 to 22 and letter N stands for nightline. Line number 1 runs along beautiful Grand Canal and it is the most popular among tourists. But if you're in a hurry, you should avoid it as it's very slow and stops on every station. Most lines will take you to the famous St. Mark's Square. To learn more about Venice public transport, check out the official page in the link below. Venice has about 250,000 inhabitants and around 55,000 of them live in the historical part that is considered to be safe. Women travelers can come alone in Venice and don't need to worry about their safety as the city is also safe at night. Obviously, huge popularity of Venice attracts pickpockets. You should pay special attention on public transport and in crowded areas, although there is a lot of police patrolling the streets, doing its best to make Venice a safe place. 
It is also good to know that swimming in Venice canals is strictly forbidden and is very dangerous. If you want to swim, hop on a water bus to Lido Island and enjoy in its beautiful sandy beaches. If you need some more practical information, check out the official City of Venice tourist and travel information website. You can find all the links we mentioned in the description below the video. I would like to invite you to watch my complete Venice travel guide playlist in the top right corner. If you like this video, please give it thumbs up as it really helps. Share your questions, your own tips and tricks about Venice in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss my future travel videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.